Hi, I'm Dr. Carlton from Carlton Clinic. Today I want to talk about the consequences of fat transferring, which is actually one of the most frequently asked questions among our patients regarding a BBL surgery. Or, well, it's known as the Brazilian butt lift. Now, basically, when we're talking about fat transfer, the majority of the patients, or even the majority of the pupil, they think that what we're transferring is the fat or the oil, or vice versa. But to be honest, that is a myth, it's a misconception. Basically, we're not transferring the fat, we're transferring the living fat cells. And this can happen in anywhere on the body. You can transfer the fat to the face, you can transfer the fat to the buttock area, or any other parts of the body. But the principle is basically the same. It conveys the principles of graft transferring in plastic surgery. So I want to talk a little bit about how the fat is transferred, the fat cells are transferred, and what is the fate about it? Because the majority of our patients are asking would it be safe to sit after 48 hours after the discharge from the hospital that would be safe to sit on my bum or is, is, is it okay to do my regular physical activities, blah, 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 etc., etc. Well, to be honest, um, a lot of clinics and my colleagues and a lot of patients, they ask about the pillow and what, what, a, what is the importance of it at the aftercare process. Uh, well, me, myself, I believe in science, in, in pure science, and on, uh, I believe in uh, evidence-based medicine. Now, basically, when we're transferring the fat, we're transferring the fat cells. I'm repeating, we're not transferring the fat itself, we're transferring the fat cells. These cells are living organisms. We're actually extracting them from some part of the body, we're devoting them from their vessels, from their nourishment, and then we are preparing them and then we're transferring it to the receptive area. Uh, in a BBL surgery, the example is a buttock area. So we're transferring it in layers, layer by layer and within the tissue. The reason why we're doing that because we want those cells to contact the surface of the regular tissue structure in the recipient area as much as possible. The reason for that is because the more the contact surface is, the, the, the higher the possibility of the cells to reach the blood vessels. And then when the bridging happens, when the blood vessels of the cells combines with the resident area blood vessels, those cells are managed to be survived. And when it gets survived and turns into a living cell and it produces the fat, and that we can say that that fat tissue that we've transferred is survived and it's living. The ones who are not able to go through this adventure, more or less, let's say it's an excursion for them, unfortunately their fate is to be that they're going to die. So uh, the, our basic incentive is to let those cells survive as much as possible. So that would be a successful fat transfer procedure. As I said, the most crucial point is to transfer it into layers in between the cells in order to increase the contract surface. So this is called the B theory. The more you layer it, the, the, the higher the possibility of the fat cells to survive and the procedure to be successful. Now basically, the bridging of the vessels happen in the first 48 hours. It can extend to a more time of period, but 48 hours is the crucial time period. Afterwards, the cells that are survived, they're gonna be living, and the ones that died, they're gonna die. Nothing will change afterwards. So, would I would sitting with, you know, taking care of my body, if I sit on it, would I would lose the fat? So these are all myths, and they're all full of question marks. So basically, the 48 hours is the most crucial time lapse that you should be careful with. And to be honest, our protocol for BBO procedure is that the patient should be hospitalized for two days. So that's the crucial time period where 
the fate of the cells is going to be defined and in the end the ones that are going to survive they're going to stay there and the ones that are going to die they're going to go no matter what are you going to do if you're going to use a pillow if you're going to be so tedious to be cautious in an order that you would think that you're going to protect the oil or the fat that you've you've had in the buttock area i think this is a misconception and it's not true and doesn't have any scientific basis so please let's believe in science and this is the scientific fact behind it beyond that uh, since it's to be happened in this way we can expect that every patient is unique and the probability and the possibility of the bridging that can happen and the survival rate is dependent on a lot of factors lifestyle the patient's genes the quality of the cells the host the area whether it's hostile or uh, appropriate to receive the cells blah 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 I can I can I can count uh, countless of factors that can affect the survival rate and that's why when we're consenting our patient we're informing them and we're telling them that this procedure is conveys unpredictability unpredictability means that the amount of cells that are going to survive there is not in our hands we're going to do the best to do it we're, we're using our fat transfer safety protocol we're using the B theory we're using a technology that spreads and sprays the cells into the layers in, into, in order to enhance the uptake rate. And of course, we're hospitalizing our patients for the first 48 hours, uh, being sure that those cells, the maximum amount of cells, could survive there. And after that, to be honest, I don't believe that the fate is going to change, no matter what you're going to do. But if you feel comfortable of using a pillow or slipping on your tummy, it's fine. I'm not objecting that idea, but to be honest, I believe in science and that's what everybody should believe in. Thank you very much.